Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 15 of our point and click series in Unity. So, in our last video, we got our 3D Observer set up and running, um, and now we're going to look at how to close it down and um, also how to make sure that we're not interacting inappropriately with any of the other um, scripts that we have running at the same time. Uh, which is to say that last time I started this, I actually got a little bit ahead of myself uh, when I was going to put this closeout uh, call in our observer cameras update function. We're actually going to delete that, and for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, we actually have a perfectly good way of checking for that inside of our game managers update function. The other reason being that we don't want the observer camera to close out the um, close out the camera with a right click and then for the update function here to do its uh, right click um, effects as well and you know have some kind of unexpected interactions in our game. So instead of uh, putting it into this update function we're going to actually just copy this bit of code that we have here which basically said at the time if we get a right click and our image viewer canvas is open then close it. So we're going to do the same thing basically but we're going to just do this with the observer camera instead. So observe, if the observer camera is open call a close function on the observer camera. Now we don't have a close function yet so we're going to need to add one. We can save this out, go to our observer camera, and if we go down here we can go to the bottom of the script here and say public void close don't need any parameters and there's three things we need to do here we need to get rid of the model we instantiated because we don't want to keep on instantiating new models without clearing out the old ones first um, we need to reset the rotation of the rig because we might have turned it in some direction that we're not expecting on our next time that we use the observer and lastly we need to actually turn off the observer camera so the, for the first thing we can do we can just say destroy model dot game object Make sure you add game object to that because if you just say model, it's going to destroy um, the transform. It's going to just destroy the component and not the full object. Um, actually, I'm not 100% positive if that's how it works with transforms too, but it might. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Always destroy the game object unless you're really specifically trying to destroy a component. Next, we're going to look at our um, rig and say rig dot rotation equals quaternion dot identity. And identity is basically the equivalent of when you're looking at an XYZ rotation of saying 0, 0, 0, except it's in quaternions. Lastly, we're just going to say game object, because we're in our camera, game object dot set active and set it to false. And that'll turn that off in the hierarchy for us. So with those three things, we can go back here and now what we should see is if we hit play we click on our uh, table we go to our cube we can click on it we can rotate it as we wish and then if we right click we back right out of it just as we want and the nice thing is we can click again and you see it starts right where it started again we um, always have that same experience where when we click on it we are seeing it from this angle now it's possible that you would want to actually save the angle it's at um, so that when you open it up again you're seeing it from that same angle. Maybe you have a puzzle where you have to rotate objects in a certain manner or something, um, in which case you would need to save that rotation probably as a quaternion, um, probably within the actual observer script so that it's um, held individually between each one. Um, but for right now we're just going to assume that you want to be able to view the object um, straight on every time that you open it the same way. Now the other thing I did want to talk about quickly here is that we did something a little bit differently with our 3D Observer than we did with our Image Viewer. If I go into our Image Viewer, um, our Image Canvas uh, script, we see that when I activated um, the canvas, we went through this process of turning off all of the colliders. And we don't do that with our camera. And why is that? Well, if you remember in uh, the video about the uh, canvas, I mentioned that UI objects don't block clicks the same way that um, 3D objects do, so that even if you have a, um, you know, a panel or an image or a button that takes a click on a UI um, canvas, 
the click still goes through and may hit an object behind it, um, which can lead to some weird stuff when you have um, colliders like we do on our objects to kind of see where um, objects are, or to like move to an object. However, if we go into Unity and we look at our observer camera, we see that we have this shade. And if you look here, you see that the shade has a mesh collider on it. So what that does for us is that mesh collider, because it's covering up the whole screen, basically absorbs any click that we would send. So even if there was a collider available behind it, it's never going to reach it. We can actually see that in action. If I um, show you here, I've actually added to our red sphere. I've replaced, we used to have the image viewer script here. I've put an observer on it. So when I hit play, I can go to this sphere, click on it, and now, um, obviously I can rotate it. It doesn't really have much of an effect because it's a sphere. But you'll also see that the blue cube still has its collider on, but if I click on it, we don't move to it like we normally would. If I click away and then click on it, we move right to it. And the reason for that, if we go back again and I click on this, the reason this isn't happening is because our shade has this mesh collider over it. Now, you might, for um, optimization reasons or other reasons, want to get rid of this collider. Um, in which case you would need to turn off all those um, other colliders for this to work the way that you want it to. Um, but that's really a matter of preference depending on how your game is working and what is optimal for you and your purposes. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you again the difference between how the UI system takes in clicks versus how objects and colliders will block clicks for you. So with that, um, this actually wraps up the 3D Observer portion of this video series. Next thing we're going to be getting into is interactable objects, things that not only can you click and look at, but you can actually affect in some way that can then in turn affect the larger game as a whole. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.